Alrighty, hello, hello, here we are. You know, it's it's that time of the year again. We're halfway through the year. And I want to make a video to do a little wrap-up. You know, see see what the deal is. Uh, the top tens. Um, the top tens so far. Right, so I got top ten songs. And I got my top ten albums per usual. And I thought I would drop in uh, my top ten films that I've seen so far this year, considering... How much of a fan I have, I am of of film. I, I thought I would like to share that with y'all. I remember I posted a chart for for my end year last year, and uh, I didn't make a video for it. But uh, here we are. Okay, let's start off with the top ten songs. So number ten, I think this one will be uh, a little bit of a surprise. It's the cover, the Incubus song cover. Um, acoustic um, drive by Stephen Yun. Stephen Yun is a actor, and he's been. I guess he was most known for you where know, he started his career off with playing Glenn in The Walking Dead. But he he uh, does an acoustic version of Drive in the TV series Beef. And uh, you know when I heard it in the show, I was like, wow, like this is really good. This is fantastic. Later. Uh, a few months later, in June, um, this uh, the song gets released on streaming services. So I've, I've definitely given it, given it enough spins, and I love it. Okay, Drive is an older song, but considering this new rendition, um, I think it's well deserving to be put on this list. Next up here, Amaranth by Model Actrees. So Model Actrees' debut album came out this year. And I think Amaranth was the song that really stuck up for me the most. Um, this uh, song or this artist, I think, is best to be compared to something like Daughters. Okay, very noisy industrial rock. I'm getting a lot of um, a lot of aggression uh, on this song, and I think I, I, it's very shocking stuff to me. And at the end of the day. It seems very forward-looking into the genre, so I think it is certainly worth your time to check out this song in the album. Next up here, number eight, we have the Turbines Pigs. This is by Black Country New Row. This is off their Live at Bush Hall album, so this is a live recording of this song. Uh, I think this is the song that kind of struck out for me the most. First off, this is the one song on that album that's got a little bit of length to it. It's like eight nine minutes long, um, piano heavy, but you know, we're still getting this nice post-rock breakdown by the end, and we have May uh, uh, singing on this, and it's v just this very emotionally um, uh, and well-orchestrated uh, piece of music, so, uh, and I'll be seeing them live too in September. Thank you, Black Country New Roads, for switching to a bigger venue, because I did not get tickets in time initially, but um, we've lucked out now. Number seven is Hollywood Baby, 100 Gex. Okay, so 100 Gex, their new album came out this year. It's been a long time. We've been waiting, and this song is extremely catchy, extremely catchy. I've listened to it too many times. Um, you know, very reminiscent of the sound that they've had um, beforehand, but now, you know, we have this, like, this pop punk um, uh flair uh, with it. I mean, you even feel that and with the hook. It's a very silly track, but it's, god damn, it's really selling and catching. It's really selling on how catchy it is. Number six. Uh, you know, this album is very consistent in its quality, so it's like picking one song, but you must recognize that uh, for this top ten, there could have probably been m many um, from this album, but we have Garbage Pale Kids um, by JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown. Um, yeah, when it comes to this album, I could say the same for any of these songs, right? It's There's a lot of energy when it comes to what Danny and Peggy are doing um, flow-wise, and all these beats are very hyper, very loud, and I think it, it, this song is up there mostly just because this beat is what was selling to, uh, to me for the most. Really, really liking that uh, the guitar part on this song. Yeah, wonderful track. Number five, Easy Prey by Little Ugly Mane. So a little bit of a cheating 
here because this song did come out last year but you know I don't always listen to singles and there was an album that came out this year the Little Ugly Main Singles like compilation so based off of that being released this year I thought fair enough I'll put Easy Prey on here this is like a power pop like a uh, song um, or like it feels very much like a 90 like late 90s I'd say alt rock um, you know, it's crazy to think the music the little ugly man was making back in the day because this sound here is, you know, it sounds like it's his sound. It's his sound. This song is, it is bliss, like g guitar bliss listening to this. So, I mean, definitely check out this song. And, you know, the compilation, the singles compilation is it's certainly worth your time in my opinion as well. Uh, number four here, Billy Woods, uh, his song FaceTime, um, you know, the album maps that came out this year wonderful album. I think FaceTime's the song that was selling for me the most. I mean, um, the, you know, bars-wise, he's a very introspective man. I don't know if I would pick this song as my favorite lyrically on the whole album, but it's this jazzy noise on this is really what's selling for me. It's got a nice hook, too. There's one more rap song I'd be making it on this list, and it should not come to any surprise to y'all that the number one rapper on my top ten songs is Yeet. Okay, we have a Yeet song. Number three is being is Now. The song Now off of the new album Afterlife. So, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the album Afterlife, and, uh, I, but at the end of the day, there is still a certain set of tracks on there that I come back to and I'm not really coming back to that album which is a shame because I would uh, for many of Eats uh, older projects but this song is fantastic okay uh, I really am liking what he's doing vocally on this one there's all these diff it's it, and it's a very emotional track it's very you're falling in druggy vibe so and it works for me and again that's not always what I come to uh, for Yeet right like Yeet can have more of a hard beat fast flow and that's not really what he's trying to do here you know modulated uh, vocals for sure and uh, I love the song I love it number two on here Polaris um, by Paranool so Paranool their last album uh, I would say was much more working on a louder, noisier shoegaze. Here it's more leaning into a dream pop territory and I'm sort of enjoying this this uh, really uh, feeling uh, his singing but at the end of the day I, we're still getting this with Polaris. This is a very very nice breakdown halfway through the song and uh, it kind of reminds me, not, uh, not gonna lie here, of like a Jane Remover sort of like EDM electronic breakdown. Um, again, uh, I did see that one of their influences for this album was Frailty, and that kind of makes sense with this song, I would say. So, Polaris, fantastic song, and yeah, the album is great. Number one song this year, number one song, and this was a kind of a tie, because uh, initially there was another song off the album that was my favorite, Sunset. My favorite song this year is Pretty Impossible, Pretty Impossible by Caroline Polachek. I think with this song specifically, I it, it's m the biggest... Uh, example of the down tempo. All right, what a shame it did not record uh, me talking about my favorite song of the year, and I can't just like pass over that. So I was just starting to say like this, uh, pretty impossible being the biggest example of the down tempo sound uh, in that track. Um, but you know, me picking this song as my favorite compared to a lot of uh, these other songs, it's all gonna have like the same sort of value or reason. It's a, this album is, is quite consistent, right? Um, there's just so many sequences of just these, these intense uh, vocals from Caroline that just hit me right in the feels, right where I want them to. She's a fantastic vocalist. Um, you know, obviously production on this is, is, is peak, peak, felt the same way with, with Pang, right? Like this type of pop, production i even said it in the review i wish more um, um pop albums not just like alternative pop uh could could sound like this um yeah brilliant brilliant track so before i get into the top 10 albums because i'll save that one for last i'll do my top 10 films of 2023 so far uh june um here is a uh, i'll shout out some things here that are making this list just because of um you know being not films, but I would say I'm recommending two TV shows for you. Uh, uh, or no, three. I'm going to recommend three. Uh, Last of Us Season 1, fantastic. If you haven't seen that, if you're a fan of the video game, this is possibly the only, like, peak 
video game adaptation you'll see. It's brilliant. Um, beef, beef, limited series. It's very comedic. It's very tense. Uh, a very tense story that, you know, as it continues on, it, it, you know, certain things keep building upon each other. Um, it, it's just so clever, so well written. Uh, and then I'd also recommend the TV series The Endless Night. Okay, this is like a five episode limited series about a fire of a bar that happened like a decade ago in Brazil and sort of the corruption uh, surrounding, you know, making sure the people who need to be arrested are put to justice. You know, there's justice for, for, for the people who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. A very good show. And I would also say the stand-up comedy, the John Mulaney, uh, Baby J stand-up comedy. Now, I don't watch that many stand-up comedies, but John Mulaney is probably one of the bigger ones that if he releases something, it's a little bit more culturally relevant, and I thought it was quite good, okay? Uh, I mean, it's, it's a very dark very dark uh, stand-up, uh, you know, really him telling his tales of going to rehab, but I think it was, you know, well, it's well worth your watch. Now, to get in to my top 10 movies. Okay, number 10 on here, it's a, an Italian film, The Eight Mountains, so this had a lot of festival releases uh, last year, but it's had an official release this year, um, and it's a really wonderful film. It's a wonderful film. It's a... Uh, Set in Italy for the most part, a little bit in Nepal. It's about these two people who grew like two kids grew up near each other, um, and then you know they were separated for a long time, uh, come back together after uh, one of their father's deaths. And uh, it just this film bringing this comparison, like uh, based off of the, their decision making on how they're going to live their life, uh, it's very, um, very personal. Uh, emotional film and I mean also being in the mountains as it is it's very very well shot and you know these natural landscapes I, I think it's a, it's a fantastic film certainly worth watching next up here we have Suzume if you're a fan of anime this person was the person who directed um, they directed that fucking movie, Your Name, which was really big a little while ago. Uh, and I thought this was creative, okay? And when it comes to anime, very often uh, I do find that decision making in these films are, or shows are, create, like very creative, you know, like um, just, you know, things that I think the average person wouldn't be coming up with in their mind. Um, it's very, it's sort of in relation to like earthquakes uh, that have happened in Japan. Um, it's 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 quite dark. Um, it's very much so a blockbuster film, um, and how it proceeds, uh, like you know, plot points. Um, but it's yeah, it's it's very well made, and it's the first time I've ever seen an anime film in theaters. So good on them. Had a lot of fun with that. Next up here, the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. It's Dungeons and Dragons here. Very creative. Very creative stuff. Um, uh, and. It, I, I think it's a very accessible for anyone. You don't really have to care about Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not the biggest Dungeons and Dragons person myself. I don't know anything about actual storylines or you know games that you play within Dungeons and Dragons, right? But uh, yeah, it's great. Next up here we have this Indonesian film, Stealing Raden Sala. So this is a sick film. It's like a, it's a. It, I think this film deserves more popularity. It's on Netflix. Um, it's not overly a big film, but it's very, like, commercial. Okay, it, this is really reminding me of something like Ocean's Eleven, right? You have, like, this whole group of people, uh, younger, like, uh, university age, who are undergoing this, this, um, heist as, uh, this person is kind of used for blackmail to, you know, forge this, like, painting, like, making this very famous painting, repainting it, um, so they were like, you know what, we're gonna, like, steal the original version to fuck with them, so, um, it, it's a lot of fun, that one is a lot of fun, uh, lengthy, lengthy film, um, and it, it sets you in the stakes of it, I think. Next up, a little surprise, okay, we have a Marvel film here, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I had a lot of fun with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, or, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, I, I do say is one of the better ones in the MCU because you know the MCU I've I certainly have my qualms with them but this is uh, the they're the best when it comes to uh, visuals um, you know the chemistry that's within the cast like I really care about the characters more here uh, as you know and you know 
with all the films, I think, barring the first one, with the second film and the third one, there is there's a very strong emotional narrative here. I think it's, it's quite an emotional film, you know, in, in relation to Rocket Raccoon, um, you know, learning about his origin story, and, um, you know, not everything for these Marvel films have to be about, like, the end of the world, right? And I think, I think that is working uh, uh, in its favor. And I think its social-political themes here are, are, are um, carefully, carefully told. Uh, and they're not, the, the, they um, feel a little bit n more natural uh, and not so heavy handed. Okay, next up here, Joyland. Joyland is a Pakistani film uh, about this dude who is helping with this, like, these dancers, right? The, there's this, like, and he, you know, ends up becoming smitten with this, this um, trans uh, woman who is like the main dancer. It's like an erotic um, um, theater. Um, and it's just a very well made film. Like I think it, it gets you emotionally connecting, connected to what's going on. Uh, especially as you know this person is living in a very uh, specific socialized um, um, life. Um, you know, there's lots of plays on gender here in the sense where, you know, him being the man um, in his relationship with his wife, because, you know, he, um, you know, he's expected to be the breadwinner, but in this situation he's not, um, and it really fucks with him, but at the same time, you know, he is, uh, you know, he's not being there for his wife, really, and he is, like, you know, cheating on her uh, with this with this woman who's working at the theater. It's it's just a very emotionally poignant film um, and well worth well worth the watch. Here we have another film, uh, another foreign film from Spain called The Beasts. Uh, and this film is very dark, very very dark film um, about this this farmer who uh, it's a French farmer living in Spain. The people in Spain ain't liking the boy because, you know, he is uh, not letting them have, like, turbines or whatever, right? Like, he's trying to, like, uh, environmentally protect the place, doesn't want to get involved, and so they end up having, like, some sort of vendetta uh, with him, and then so there's this back and forth with his neighbors, um, you know, and, okay, concept alone, you're like, okay, so some shit's gonna happen, but yeah, no, shit is gonna happen. It gets quite dark. Uh, I think this is one of my like visually like one of my favorite films this year. It's um, there's some there's some pretty good long takes on here. Um, yeah, and the lead if uh, if you've uh, seen the movie Glorious Bastards, you will recognize him. He is the the farmer at the start of that movie. Um, which is cool because I haven't seen him in anything else. So it was it was uh, it was quite refreshing to see him in a role um, that I wasn't uh, that I'm not so familiar with. Next up here. John Wick Chapter 4. John Wick is one of the best action uh, uh, series, easily one of the best action series, and this one is the one I always wanted, okay? They decide to go for this like three hour long film um, that, uh, for it to be this good and not rely on story is fantastic. Okay, you know you're not you're not um, awestruck by the story really, but how this film is able to put you in very very lengthy action sequences. There's multiple in this film, and it's so well shot, it's so well choreographed that you when you're watching this right, like you are seeing all the movements, all the things that are that are happening. Like you you can actually get invested in the action, which sometimes I would argue for a lot of action films the way that they're shot, like fast cuts and whatnot. It doesn't let you become a part of that. There's certainly a lot more distance, but this film doesn't really uh, have that distance. It's a silly film. It's well aware of that. That, but a silly film that is that is that is this well made and it being well made is a part of how it let makes you uh, uh, a part of that entertainment uh, yeah wow what can I say next up here um, Bo is afraid Bo is afraid third Ari Aster film and I absolutely love this you know this film was definitely um, you know not everyone was the biggest 
fan of, of his newest film for sure, um, but I had a lot of fun with it. I think it's still jam-packed with a lot of symbolism. This is his most surrealistic, this is his most psychological, um, you know, in his two other films, it's really, uh, although there is main characters there, they're still in this group dynamic. In this film, it, there is no group dynamic. You are in um, Bo's uh, state of mind, for sure. And this film is weird. It's very weird. You won't really watch another film like it again. So that's where it really uh, strays from any of the other films on here, I'd say. Like, going to see that film in theaters, the experience of it ending, I'm, like, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, eyes are open. I'm like, what is going on? It, it's, you know, it goes through all these different sequences. It, see, it feels very druggy. You know, it feels like you're watching like a drug trip uh, for sure. Um, you know, because things, a lot of things are not based in reality. Uh, but I don't really want to say much else about it, okay? You just, it's something you need to to watch. Uh, if you, uh, although if you're not into fucked up things, I would recommend you stay away from it because it, it certainly can be quite a disturbing film, but at the same time its length may put you off because uh, it is, it's that it's a three hour long film uh, and it certainly takes the energy out of you, right? It's not this like three hour trip of good times, it's, it's dark, depressing, um, but I think you can find a lot of meaning watching it. Uh, it, it can at least get your head thinking more than the average film. I would say. Next film on here, the number one, which should come to no shock is um, if you've been paying attention to anything uh, movie-wise, but Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah. Across the Spider-Verse. It's fucking brilliant. Uh, I love the first one, Into the Spider-Verse, and this one is just as good. Okay? Um, uh, how this film is even able to uh, balance as many Spider-Man here and, you know, give them all very vivid personalities, make you, not even just personalities, but like how they're fighting, like, you know, like the excitement behind that, um, you know, you have, uh, Miles Morales too, who, when you're watching him, he's a very human character in the sense of like you, um, do care about his struggles, not as Spider-Man, which is something I would recall back to like Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, which, you know, he does the human narrative of Peter Parker very well uh, in that movie. And, you know, multiverse, when it comes to the multiverse, um, it's one of those things too, like with even everything everywhere, which has done it great, but, you know, there to me, there is that worry that the multiverse is something that's going to become annoying, okay? Um, but, here it's done with such, uh, with such care, okay? Um, it's not, uh, of course there's this idea of fan service here, uh, right? You're doing things for the fans, okay? But like the whole purpose behind this, um, it really is like a, a passion of love. And uh, you know, the animation on this, making it look like a comic book, a lot of hard work was put into this movie. Um, a lot of hard work, uh, and it really pays off. It's fat. It's uh, two hours, two and a half hours long, and you know the pacing is great. Okay, you're not really gonna get bored watching this, right? It's it, like already I've been thinking like I could go for a rewatch again. I could. The only um, um, problem I have with this movie, though, I will say, is the way it ends. And some people have said this as well. Like I get that this is a uh, part one of a two-parter, um, but the way it ends. It, it, it's just so weird. It, 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 it's on a cliffhanger that doesn't feel paced to the, be the ending of the film. Which, you know, we this isn't the first time we've had a two-parter film, so... Um, it's a little annoying. Um, you know, in the sense that this feels like it was supposed to be a four-hour, five-hour long film, but again, you're not selling a five-hour long Spider-Man film in theaters, okay? Like, that's... That's... Let's, let's be real. But yeah, you know, this is brilliant. You know, just for me to be sitting here being such a film snob, film nerd, and to, you know, have a Spider-Man movie be just topping it, just topping it, okay? Um, it's amazing. And also, too, this film and even the last one, they're, they're very humorous. Very, very humorous films. You know, um, I would say when it comes to the MCU, often it's 
not that funny. It's a little bit more uh, leaning into the cringe territory for me. So I'm glad that I can have just such a fun experience. And wh why would you not want to have fun in the films, in the movie theaters, okay? Um, okay, let's get into top 10. Um, before I get into the top 10 here, I'm, I am just going to shout out an EP that I really liked recently. I found out about Jane Remover's side project, Veteran, Four Songs, Arizona. I loved it. I love it. Very catchy stuff, and I hope that they continue to make music under that name. Okay, let's get into the top 10 here. It's certainly leaning more into this, this rock territory, but, you know, this is a very concise album, okay? Eight tracks, I believe, and, uh, you know, when it comes to the sound of this, the instrumentation of it, you know, they are tech technical uh, performers, okay? It's it's not just about this like overall sound of a song that is given to you, right? You, you put your headphones on and you're hearing specific sounds from all the instrument, instruments uh, come together. Um, so it's layered. It's a, it's a layered experience for sure. And um, I think it's certainly worth your time. Next up here we have this Lonnie Holly, Oh Me, Oh My. So this person's been making music for a little bit. And yes, I did see that Fantano gave it a nine. So I decided to give it a listen. And you know what? Yeah, it was brilliant. Okay. Okay, this is a very odd soul album, okay? It's very, very odd, but Lonnie Holly uh, is, a, is a wonderful, wonderful singer, and I think he's he's rich, rich with a lot of, um, with a lot of uh, lyrical substance on here as well, um, and, you know, how he's using features on here, you know, Sharon Von Etten, um, fucking uh, Michael Stipe from R.E.M., and, like, fucking... Um, Bonnie Vera is on here. It, is, it all works uh, magnificently, and I mean, yeah, you know, Lonnie Holly is an old man. He is an old, old man, uh, and to be making something sound like this, because it sounds very experimental, you know, I, I listened to this album and thinking on it, it's like this is a very, um, got a very specific identity. I can't really compare it um, to anything else, and um, so I think his voice deserves to be heard. Uh, I read into his life a little bit. He had a very shitty life as a kid. Um, um, and, you know, for a very, very long time, he was like, um, he made sculptures and shit like that. So, you know, he's been an artist for a long time, but I don't think he had maybe that big of a name. And I, I do hope that this potentially can, you know, uh, make him uh, bigger for sure. Next up here, that feels good, Jessie Ware. She's coming back after the success of What's Your Pleasure, and um, <laughs> it's, it's a brilliant album. Okay? This is a straight up, like, a pop album. You know what I mean? Every song is um, just trying to get you to groove, okay? Um, it's, it's very well-made, well-orchestrated stuff, and, you know, listening to it, I, I'm feeling like, ooh, 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 right? Like, it's, it, there's a lot of, a lot of, Fun to be had here. It's one of those like, yeah, the most of this is sounding like singles type of album. So I'm very happy to be having this, and I'm sure that Jesse Ware is going to continue on making uh, some bangers uh, uh, without a doubt. Next up here, Dog's Body, Model Act Trees, de debut album, this noise rock album, and uh, I love this album. Okay, for the most part here, I'm sitting with very, very odd instrumentation. Okay, very, but it's very shocking. It's very nerving how the vocalist is on here scaring the shit out of me okay most of the songs on here are very loud which i appreciate but then you know there's some moments here where it's a little bit quieter a little bit more uh, of the shoo shoo vibe on here as well um i just think this is very compact very nice very tight um album um that certainly certainly deserves your attention next up here maps billy woods kenny seagal rap album here um yeah, this is the best, uh, th no, uh, this is like one of the best, it's the second best rap album of the year, I guess, but the w one that's my favorite, I think you can interchange them for sure. This has got a, it's just very soft, jazzy instrumentation beats throughout this for the most t part, and, you know, I've been a, certainly a fan of Billy Woods uh, as of late, like past couple years, the albums just came out with I've liked, but this one is certainly my favorite, um, just on the beat selection as well, right, it's very nice, smooth, riding, and I think getting to actually sit and read Billy Wood's lyrics is an essential because uh, he's e easily one of the most engaging uh, lyricists in the rap game, uh, I would say. Not always not always saying that when I'm sitting there and reading it that it's like hitting me with a personal edge, um, but it's very, very poetic. Um, but sometimes there is. There is certainly a personal edge that I, I, I found throughout this album, but oh, yeah. 
it's 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 demanding of your attention. Next up here, I'll just talk about five and number four, okay? Yeah, I feel like After the Magic has a chance of getting up higher on this list maybe later just because of uh, the experience of listening to it. Like, it really is uh, so... Um, blissful, so beautiful. Um, but you know, I'm not listening to it or feeling it on a track to track basis. Like, I'm not, uh, like, I don't know all the tracks by name, really, right? But you, you, the process of listening to it, it's a very, very consistent uh, experience, okay? Uh, uh, very, very awesome stuff. Not as noisy as the last one, but I think. Uh, leaning into this more dreamier uh, sound, I, I think I think I may uh, prefer that for sure. And after the night is a, just a fucking. It's a great live album. It's extremely well made. I'm loving hearing these renditions of songs that were on the last album and on this album. Uh, and the reason why this album is so high up is definitely for the like 50 minute version of Into the Endless Night which was a, a song, a single of a song that already was kind of lengthy I think, Maybe, I think it was only like 10 minutes but and he even said I guess that he wanted to do something that was like the Fishman's live album with like the long version of Long Season but then again that is just like a 20 minute version of an already 40 minute song um, but yeah, and it, it's fucking sick, yo. This live version is sick, but we also have another live album that is great, and that's the next album on here, Live at Bush Hall, Black Country, New Roads, okay? Um, Black Country, New Road, just proving that they do not need Isaac to succeed, okay? They don't need Isaac to succeed. They don't, uh, um, this is certainly different. A little bit like instrumentation in ways is reminiscent of what they were doing prior but I do feel like there is more of this it's more leaning into this arcade fire indie rock sound than it was with this like post rock math rock shit that was happening for sure um, and you know maybe less cynicism uh, lyrically, like I think we're getting, uh, you know, more of their personalities shining out lyrically. I, I really like how they're using three different vocalists on this. They all uh, work in their own right, um, for sure. Uh, I just think there's a lot of variety on this. A lot of variety. Uh, and, and obviously the instrumentation on here is constantly, consistently good, especially I think uh, the drums uh, deserve a commendation for sure. Um, yeah, this is this is a this is a brilliant, very emotive album, and, and I, I I sense that um, this will be just as important as their other albums, right? Especially when it comes to uh, like an indie rock staple for sure. Next up here we have the Scare and the Hose, JPEG Mafia, Danny Brown albums. We have this collab album with JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown, and let's just say they are making some of the best beats in the game. Okay, this shit makes me go crazy. This album makes me go crazy. Okay, it's oh, it's it's nuts. Okay, like the beats on here, like listening to them, especially in the car, and have them on, and I'm like, God damn, like this is loud, loud clunky industrial beats like what is going on and you know and I'm, I'm liking Danny Brown on these beats too like sure I've heard Danny Brown on weird beats a la Trosty Exhibition but this is a completely different vibe and Peggy yes I've heard him on beats like this but it does seem like he's amping up what he has done prior okay and you know Peggy as a as a rapper is just he's very aggressive he's very nuts okay so I, I think we're getting a good pairing of them together it, but yes on a beat wise on a sound wise that's the reason why this is up here so high like this is um, you know hit after hit after hit after hit uh, of, of a backing uh, for sh sure like um, rappers most people in the rap game could only get so fucking lucky for every song on an album to sound this good. Okay? Um, that's fucking he's smart. Um, best album I've heard so far this year. Yeah, it's still, it's still Desire, I Want to Turn Into You. I almost feel like I have some bias for, for my girl Caroline Polichek because I'm also very much so a big fan of Pang. And if you were a big fan of Pang, you're gonna like this too, you know what I mean? I do think, like I was already saying about my favorite song of the year uh, with her, that yeah, you know, this down tempo sound on here is, I, I like that direction where I'm feeling more of this nostalgia for something from the late 90s, early 2000s, 
right? But uh, it's more or less a lot of the same from Pang. I will say that I like Pang just a little bit more, just a wee bit more. Bite, but um, yeah, there's something so uh, just so uh, there's so something so freeing about the way that she she sings on these songs. You know, something so so sensual, uh, something so powerful, and uh, it's I love it, absolutely love it. I don't know this. I don't think this is gonna be my favorite album of the year, though. Like I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like I don't know. I feel like something else better has to come out but regardless of the fact I'd be happy if this if this this stayed number one for sure it's brilliant brilliant pop album um, and I I definitely heavily recommend it to all who will listen um, okay yeah if there's anything else you want to see on this channel okay you can put uh, a comment down below I'm sure uh, I can look into it but uh, thank you for watching and seeing me just ramble on and on about all the things that I love okay this year these are the things uh, that I loved um, this is a great year for media okay um, it seems like it's always a great year for media isn't it and even if it's not there was something good that came out of it you know at the end of the day okay anyways peace out